Check, check, check. Welcome back to Craft Computing. Yada, yada. Cool. All right. Today on the channel, we're going to take a look at yet another Chinese market graphics card. And hopefully this one goes better than the first. We still have scotch, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Today's video is brought to you by Athletic Greens. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a convenient nutritional supplement that helps with immune support, gut health, and most importantly, following a late night, recovery. Too many late nights are often followed by early mornings, if you know what I mean. And AG1's all-in-one foundational nutrition means that just one scoop in the morning gets you the vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and other goodies your brain and body need to replenish and refuel. It's dairy and gluten-free, meaning it's easy on the stomach and it tastes good too. Just add one scoop to a glass of water, or as they say, other liquid base, and enjoy. Your gut health is your health, so why not support what you have? AG1 takes just one minute per day and sets you up to feel good for the rest of it. Visit the link down in the video description to get five travel packs for free, plus some other goodies along with your first purchase. And thanks again to Athletic Greens for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm not Ryan Reynolds. Ah, uh, the AMD RX 580, longtime darling of budget builders everywhere. At its lowest point, for about $100, you could pick up an RX 580, and for that money, you're getting 2,304 shader cores built on AMD's Polaris 20 architecture, along with either 4 or 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. But then the mining craze happened, and these kind of went away. They are just now starting to get back down to $100, but for those who may not want to risk their money with a used mining GPU, there is a near new option you might want to take a look at. But now, there's this. So, what exactly is this? This is an AMD RX 580 sent over to me by Azurex for my review. Now, quick disclosure, no money changed hands. Azurex does not get to see this video before it goes live on YouTube, and my opinions are 100% my own. But thanks to Azurex for sending this out. So this is an RX 580, however, it is a slightly binned down version with only 2,048 shader cores, also known as an RX 570, but with higher clock speeds. I've always hated that naming scheme. But this does have eight gigabytes of GDDR5, and should prove to be a pretty competent gaming card. Best of all, it was only $87 on AliExpress. Now, why did I say nearly new? Well, chances are this card is not 100% new. The die, I almost guarantee, came out of some decommissioned mining cards and have since been remanufactured or reballed onto a new PCB. We will check that out before the end of the video. But for all intents and purposes, this is the same GPU core as an RX 580, just with all new hardware added on top. One of the risks of buying mining cards is not the silicon degrading and getting lower clock speeds, it's actually all of the other components of the card. How well do the fans still work? Are the capacitors still in good shape? Uh, a lot of other components on these cards can break, so if you can have good silicon and put it onto a new PCB, that might just be a winning formula. But there's really only one way to find out. And so let's go ahead and slide this onto my test bench and see exactly what we're working with. So we've got it all plugged in. Let's see if it actually works. Uh, good news to start, the fans are spinning up, although I'd expect that at a minimum. And just like that, we got a post screen. So we got onto the Windows desktop. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at Device Manager. Oh, as I was doing that, it looks like we're getting drivers from Windows. So thank you. And hey, that pretty much answers my question right there. Uh, AMD RX 580 2048 SP. At least that is the version that the Windows Update server gave us. I think I'm still going to go on to AMD's website, download the official driver package, make sure we can update this thing to 100% current, and then we'll run this thing through its paces. 
First and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and run DDU, so Display Driver Uninstaller, making sure we're working with a 100% clean base. And now that that's done, let's go ahead and install the latest AMD drivers. Successfully detected the card, so this should work without any issues. And just like that, looks like everything is working. So let's give this one last restart and we'll get into the fun part of this video. Back on the Windows desktop and everything seems to be in order. I see the uh, AMD Adrenaline toolbar is up and running. Let's go ahead and give this a quick look. Uh, running version 23.3.1, last updated just a couple of days ago. And yeah, nothing really out of the ordinary here. Uh, if we jump into hardware info, we've got our AMD Radeon RX 580 2048 SP. We've got all of our sensors up and running, uh, including power, memory, everything looks fine. So let's go ahead and give this a quick benchmark and see if it stacks up. Just gonna be running 3D Mark here to verify it scores at least on par with an RX 570, if not an RX 580, or somewhere in between as this card should. Then we'll probably play up a couple of games and then finally take this apart, find out exactly what's inside of here and determine if this is a good value or not. So far, I'm impressed enough mainly because the default driver's installed. Maybe 51 Risk could learn something here. We'll go ahead and run this through Time Spy Standard and hit go. One thing I can tell you that is working is the fans don't spin up if the card's not in use. Uh, so at idle, your system will be pretty much dead silent. Let's see what, uh, what happens once we get into game though. Running at around 28 FPS, give or take, although this particular test fluctuates a lot. Still waiting for the fans to spin up. We're 20 seconds in now. Oh, there we go. Almost 40 seconds it took for the fan to spin up at 100% load. That's moderately impressive, given there's only a couple of heat pipes in here. Although those are definitely warm. And there we go, a graphic score of 3824. Uh, honestly, not that bad, but let's go ahead and take a look and see how that compares with some of my previous RX 570 and RX 580 results. Huh, for some reason, my processor isn't recognized in the 11900H engineering sample. Oh well. A couple interesting notes here. Uh, average temperature during testing at 58 degrees Celsius and the max temp we saw was actually 59 degrees Celsius. Very impressive for what is a pretty tiny little cooler. Clock speed hovered right around 1244 megahertz. And in fact, if I jump over to hardware info, we can see, yep, 1244 megahertz, max clock speed. That's a little lower than a standard RX 580, which can do upwards of like 1470, but it's still higher than an RX 570, which I believe is capped at about 11 or 1150. So again, all things are kind of looking, looking good. Okay, here's one comparable that I can add. That is an RX 580, but on a Ryzen 5 1600 AF, so a significantly slower CPU. But we'll go ahead and take a look at that. And there we go, there's an RX 570 running a Ryzen 5 2600. So let's go ahead and add that as well. And let's take a look. So obviously the CPU on this particular test bench with that 11900HES is night and day faster than either the 2600 or the 1600 AF. But if we look at our graphics score, which should be fairly CPU independent, we're seeing that the 580-2048 is sitting roughly between the RX 570 and the RX 580, leaning towards the 570. We've got a 3824 on the 2048 SP. We've got a 3759 on the RX 570 and a 4451 on the actual RX 580. 
Now, obviously, take these results with a grain of salt since we're using vastly different CPU hardware on all the different platforms, but I don't think in the graphics score in TimeSpy it makes that much of a difference. So, this is pretty much exactly what was advertised in somewhere between an RX 570 and an RX 580 with 8 gigabytes of GDDR5. $87. Not bad. Let's go ahead and see how, uh, how it fares in some games. Let's go ahead and start off with some Doom Eternal. Go into our settings, verify everything looks correct. 1920 by 1080, V-Sync is off. And let's go ahead and set this to Ultra and make sure we're taking advantage of that eight gigabytes of video memory. Now, this is not going to be a comprehensive or scientific benchmark. This is just going to be basically me looking at the frame counter as well as some of the GPU specs and stats just to make sure everything is in order. But as you saw during the 3D Mark test, everything looks fantastic thus far. Another thing that I'm noticing that is actually kind of unique, the RX 580 is known for having excessive coil wine. Uh, it, it's one of those cards that no matter which card you got, no matter what design, what manufacturer, there's always a little bit more than average coil wine. Um, at 90 FPS or 120 FPS right here, I don't hear any. Now I did hear some coil wine when the system was booting the startup page for Doom and we were running at like 2000 FPS because they just don't cap the uh, the frame rate there. But at 118 FPS, this thing's basically silent. Just shy of four and a quarter gigabytes of video memory. So this has been pretty rock solid between right around 95 FPS at some of the low points. There's an 87 right there. Uh, but hovering right around that 100 FPS mark more often than not, uh, we're sitting at just uh, 59 degrees Celsius again on the GPU core, uh, 1244 megahertz, pretty much locked, and right around 115 watts of total power out of the GPU. I'll say that is more than impressive. Uh, not only that, the fans are pretty even as well. Uh, I don't have that up right now, but if I bet if I alt tab, they're running at about 2000 RPM, which was the peak that these ran during 3D Mark. Uh, oh, there we just hit 60 degrees, but overall that's pretty darn chilly for an RX 580, especially one that only costs $87 new. But what do you say we really let this thing stretch its legs? Let's go ahead and fire up Cyberpunk and uh, couple reasons for that. One, I want to see a title running with FSR. Number two, I want to see if we can get that GPU memory usage up as high as possible. So let's see what we're able to do here. So we're going to load up FSR. That's our Fidelity FX super resolution. We're going to turn that on to performance mode. And we are at the high preset. Actually, let's go ahead and set everything to high. And then we'll set this over to performance on FSR and turn off motion blur. Other than that, we're gonna pretty much leave everything as it is. Go ahead and hit apply. And let's jump into the game. Here we are in the game. And uh, yet again, everything's looking pretty darn optimal as far as specs and stats go. Uh, we're again running at 1244 megahertz. This time we're drawing a little bit less power. I've seen it dip down to about 95. Right now we're sitting, well, there we go, 95 between 95 and 100 watts of total draw. And as a result, we're actually running quite a bit cooler at only 53 or 54 degrees Celsius. Now I did successfully get uh, quite a bit more of the memory utilized. We're sitting between 4.6 and 4.8 gigabytes of video memory used, but utilization sitting right at 100%. And Man, if you would have told me when Cyberpunk came out that you could play this game on a sub $100 graphics card. So yeah, even during combat, 50 FPS plus most of the time. There we're using uh, almost 5.2 gigabytes of video memory. No issues to speak of. And like I said, still running at 54 degrees. I am 
I'm more than satisfied. I'm actually fairly impressed. So, definitely performs well, but let's go ahead and take a quick look at this PCB. Uh, overall, it looks like everything will come apart with uh, just a number one screwdriver, although I do see a couple of screws down here inside the fan shroud that might be a little bit more difficult to get to. But I think we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah, those are just keeping the rear of the fan housing together. I can see the, the screw standoffs in there. Okay, and the back plate is held on from the front, so it looks like the first thing we're gonna do is simply remove the top shroud and the heat sink. Here we go. So number one. There we go. Just like that. So nothing too difficult there, just uh, looks like four screws for the main portion of the heat sink. There's two more to keep the VRM coolers intact. And then these two little screws to hold uh, the back of the fan shroud together. And there's our back plate. So, nothing too exotic there. Uh, we can see that the die is making very good contact with the cooler itself, although it appears the cooler may have actually been used for a different product in the past. There's an outline where some old thermal compound was that doesn't even come close to lining up with the pattern for this GPU die. That is super interesting. <laughs> but it does line up perfectly with the two heat pipes, so I'm not sure why that might actually be a thing, but who knows. Uh, memory pads are all making fantastic contact. You can see just a little bit of residue on the memory chipsets themselves. And then there's good impressions in the thermal pads uh, for both the memory as well as the VRM over here on the side. Uh, this entire heatsink is all basically one big unit. Uh, even the VRM heatsink is tied into the larger unit and is getting direct cooling from those two fans. Uh, Two copper heat pipes, again, nothing too exotic, but definitely seemed to get the job done there. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get this GPU cleaned off real quick and see if we can get any identifying numbers, although I'm not really holding my breath there. Yeah, nothing really identifiable. There are a couple small sets of numbers, uh, top and bottom of the chip, but, uh, Nothing that really gives it away is either a mining card or an RX 580. Memory chips appear to be Micron, and the interesting thing, again, is that we are, uh, we've got a genuine AMD silk screen on there. I don't know if this was an AMD reference board. That does seem to make the most sense uh, as far as where this basic design came from. Uh, but overall, looks like a pretty good board. Uh, Caps all look to be in pretty decent shape. And everything that needs thermal contact seems to have thermal contact. Uh, I really don't see any problems with this thing at all, especially given, again, that price tag of $87. So I don't think there's anything left to do but uh, put this thing back together. And the closest thing I have is a little knock to a paste, so uh, I think that's what we're gonna use. There we go. One fully reassembled RX 580-2048SP. For a good number of years now, there has been a pretty wide gap in the market when it comes to being able to afford a graphics card and not. Even the graphics cards that have come in under $200 or $150 have been so completely not worth it pretty much by any standards as to leave a lot of budget gamers completely out of the running. At $87, this may just be an RX 580 in a new shell, but at $87, it is a breath of fresh air to find a new graphics card that has not only pretty decent performance, but also pretty fantastic thermals and doesn't look half bad to boot. If you have been a little sketched out by buying a used graphics card, I think this would be a fantastic option for a new system build or potentially to upgrade an aging system. 
If you're interested in picking up the Azure X RX 580 2048SP, I will have a link down in the video description. Do give that a look. It does give me a little bit of money every time you click on it, and it helps out the channel more than you know. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Mastodon at Craft Computing to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Oh, and make yourself one of these. Mixology March continues here on the channel, and today we are going to be making a bramble. Really nice thing about this cocktail is you can build it straight in the glass. You don't need a mixing glass, you don't need a shaker or anything like that. So, let's go ahead and get this thing started. Start out by filling a rocks glass about half full with some ice. Then, we're going to juice half of a lemon in there. There we go. And in fact, we're also going to garnish with a lemon. So I'm going to get a couple of slices in advance here. So, juice half of a lemon right into the rocks glass. Then, go ahead and toss in your lemon wheels. There we go. This drink is a gin-based drink, so today we're going to be using Aviation, America's favorite gin, now owned by a Canadian. So we're going to do an ounce and a half of that. Fun fact, this is actually the signature bottle of Aviation Gin. You can tell because it has Ryan Reynolds' signature etched there on the front. That's not his actual signature, that's just a laser etching. And this bottle costs $10 more to have his signature etched on it. What a cheeky bastard. Then we're gonna do a half ounce of simple syrup. With all the ingredients in there, go ahead and give that a quick stir. And now for my favorite part. This calls for three quarter ounce of blackberry liqueur. However, I happen to have this Oregon Marionberry whiskey on the shelf, so we're gonna do a little bit of an audible and go with this instead. Uh, this is gonna be a three quarter ounce, and you're not gonna stir this in, you're gonna float it on top of the drink. And that's usually done by getting your measure, putting your bar spoon right on the top, and making sure it hits the top nice and gently, just like that. So what you're left with is this little float of your Marionberry whiskey or blackberry liqueur on top of the drink. And there you have a bramble, or two in my case. Rhett? <laughs> I've never had this cocktail before. Um, I've heard of it. It's, it's been on my list to make. I've just never done it. Oh man, that is spectacularly good. No offense to Aviation, but Aviation is not my personal favorite gin. It's a good gin, but it's definitely more of the citrusy lemon style gins rather than more of a botanical dry gin. It's very good, but it's just not necessarily what I go for. However, in a bramble, holy crap. The gin just sinks. It, it is so sweet and lemon forward. And kind of like Brett said, I don't know if you heard him off camera, that, uh, that whiskey, even though it's a float, it gives it this super smooth and slightly tart finish. Oh. I like this drink.